We are back once again, guys, right here on the channel. We're here to talk about SmackDown Live, and, and holy crap, man. What a SmackDown this was, man. What a SmackDown this was. It was unreal. Uh, I mean, it was so unreal. We had, we had so many, we had, we actually had a really good show. We had a lot, we had a lot happen. So, let's, uh, let's get right down to it, shall we? We had, we, we started off the show with the contract signing between Kofi Kingston and the new Daniel Bryan. Kofi Kingston goes over about how it's been 11 years and how he feel is how that he feels like it's finally his time to shine. He's always wanted to be WWE champion. As he's about to sign the contract, however, Vince McMahon comes out and tells Kofi Kingston that he is replacing him. Basically pulling a basically doing the exact same thing that he did to Becky Lynch minus the suspension for 60 days. So so out, so he introduces Kevin Owens as as Kofi's replacement. Now, you people need to understand this. Kevin Owens is not a heel here. He's not a heel here. Because Daniel Bryan's the heel. Vince McMahon. Now, I know a lot of people are very furious about this, but I don't see this harming Kofi Mania. Now, at first... At first, I was thinking, okay, maybe it's possible Kofi Mania is dead. Maybe Kofi Mania is dead. Vince McMahon doesn't believe in Kofi Mania. But then, but then I rethought about it. I was like, maybe this does help Kofi Mania. But to all the Kofi Kingston fans who've been wanting Kofi Mania, trust me, I want to see Kofi Mania. I want to see Kofi Kingston get his shot at the WWE Championship. I do. But guys, I don't see Kevin Owens winning the WWE Championship at all. By the way, did you see the look on Kevin's face? Kevin looked like he he didn't want to do it. He explained everything on his uh, exclusive on, on the exclusive video that that they put up on their YouTube channel about it. He explained that Vince approached him. He didn't want to take to take away the offer. He didn't want to take away Kofi's spot. But he had no choice. He had to accept the offer. And he also explained how, how he's been at home for five months with his wife and kids. And how and how it's changed him. And also, you guys also saw Kevin Owens. He told Stephanie and Shane he wanted to be in a tag team match with Kofi Kingston. As a way to, to repay him back. Because I feel like he was screwed. I feel like it was just good. So, guys, I don't see... I just don't see it. I just don't see Kevin Owens winning the WWE Championship. I just don't see it. I don't see Kevin Owens winning. I could possibly see it happening. I could definitely see Kofi Kingston getting his match at WrestleMania. The bar. Now, here's the weird thing. SmackDown originally announced that Johnny Gargano was going to take on Cesaro. But then we have the returning Hardy Boys. Maybe this is why they didn't want to do the match. Because the Hardy Boys made their return. And boy, oh boy, was I surprised to see Matt Hardy. Honestly, I, I thought the guy retired. I thought Matt Hardy retired, to be quite honest with you. 
But you know what? It was good to see Matt Hardy. I thought he retired, but it was good to see Matt Hardy. And he's on the right brand. SmackDown Live. I feel like it's a great brand for him to be on. So the Hardy Boys beat the bar in a in a in a good match. In a good match. We had our truth. We haven't seen this guy since he won the uh, United States title like about two weeks ago. So he issues an open challenge, and Andrade Cien Almas is about to make the challenge, but then Rey Mysterio comes out and makes the challenge as well. So our truth decides to take them both on. Trying to make John Cena proud by taking on all challenges. Now look, I've got nothing... Now, I've got no problems with R-Truth as the United States Champion. Because I've had a lot of people complain about how, oh, it's on a comedy act, man. I mean, R-Truth is a decent wrestler in his own right. So... I don't see much wrong with this. It was this was a fantastic match. I felt like this was a really good match. I, I really enjoyed this match. Honestly, I got no complaints about the ending. Our truth, he actually retained his title here. And, and to be honest with you, I feel like it makes sense because Andrade and Ray are feuding. Andrade, Cien, and Ray are, are feuding. So it literally makes no now. Now, I know some people are going to say, Oh, well, you could have put the belt on one of them to make the, to, to enhance the feud by adding the United States title to it. No, 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 no. I think the United States Championship should go around the waist of Samoa Joe. That is who I want to see our truth lose the United States Championship to. Someone like Samoa Joe deserves the United States Championship. Sure, Andrade deserves a championship. Sure, he does. But I feel like Samoa Joe should be the United States champion. Whether he defends it at Fastlane against Joe, or if it's WrestleMania. I don't care. I want to see Samoa Joe with the United States championship. Samoa Joe damn deserves a championship. He damn well deserves a championship. At Fastlane, you have Samoa Joe beat R-Truth if they go with it. And then you have Mustafa Ali return for WrestleMania. And you have Joe versus Ali. Because Ali was feuding with Joe. So there you go. Joe versus Ali for the United States Championship. I feel like that would be a blockbuster of a match. David versus Goliath like. Does Mustafa Ali win the US Championship? Well, no. Because then that would just make some old Joe a transitional champion. But... That's just what I would do. I've got no problems with our truth retaining this championship. Yet Charlotte Flair, she demands, she expects to be handed the Raw Women's Championship after Ronda's actions. She drops the title in the ring and walks off. Which is what happened on the Raw with Ronda. So Charlotte is expecting Vince McMahon to hand her the Raw Women's Championship. I know where this is going. Ronda Rousey is is gonna be all like, "Oh no, I want my title. I want Becky." You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know what? Stop. You know, you know what? Stop. I've been holding back my frustrations on this for a while now, and I'm sick of it. Why in the hell is Ronda Rousey feeling bad for Becky Lynch? I mean, seriously. If I remember a few months ago, back at Survivor Series, when Survivor Series was over, after Charlotte Flair heinously beat down Ronda, Ronda said, I'm not done with Charlotte Flair. We're going to write the next chapter. And didn't she say to Becky Lynch, Oh, look at you, you were on the pre-show... But I, I was on the main card. While well, you were floating around on a pre-show, throwing bodies over in a battle royal. I mean, honestly, like the, the like the logic profounds me about this. Like you hear you hear Ronda say all these badass things 
But then now, she, but then she turns around into this nice, nice girl type of character. I'm sick of it. This is the reasons why I hate Rhonda as a babyface. She sucks at that role. She's better off if she's a heel. You have Charlotte playing the heel just because people hate her. You you make her the heel because people hate her. It's funny how you don't do that with Roman. We hate Roman, but you don't turn him heel. Look, I know it's going to be a triple threat, but it pisses me off to know that Becky, that Rhonda said she wants to continue her story with Charlotte. And it pisses me off more that she's defending Becky, considering that she said to her that I can kill you with one punch. And you've never first anyone like me. You've never dealt with anyone like me. A former UFC champion. You've never been in a ring with a former UFC champion. When you hear Ronda say all these badass things and then turn around and start feeling bad for Becky, it just makes me cringe. It makes me cringe. What? Instead of complaining about Becky, why not go to WrestleMania, take on Charlotte like Vince wants you to, tap out Charlotte, and prove your point? That's the thing I hate about Ronda as, and her character. It makes no sense. The story writing is garbage. It's stupid. It makes no sense. It, it literally makes no sense. Charlotte expects the Raw Women's title to be handed to her. Well, she's had seven other title reigns handed to you, handed to her. So, I guess this is no. I guess this is not shocking news. For in the life of Charlotte Flair. Lana calls Alistair Black and Ricochet nothing special. I believe Adam Cole said that about Ricochet, and look what happened to him. Ricochet ended up beating him for the North American Championship because Adam Cole said Ricochet was not special. So Lana, you just signed your death warrant because you told two of the biggest names in NXT they're nothing special. Alistair Black pins Shinsuke Nakamura in a tag team match. Because that's what happened next. We had Alistair Black and Ricochet versus Nakamura and Rusev in a tag team match. This was a, it was a decent tag team match. I thoroughly enjoyed it myself. And Alistair Black pins Shinsuke Nakamura. Kevin Owens and Kofi Kingston versus Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan. And no, I don't like calling him Rowan, by the way, if people are saying, oh, his name's Rowan. I prefer calling him Eric Rowan because that was his name. That, that's, that, to me, that's his name. Kevin Owens and Kofi Kingston got the victory here. Kevin Owens, he does a Stone Cold Stunner. Let me guess, are people going to start calling Kevin Owens the next Stone Cold? Because he did Stone Cold's finishing move? That was basically everything, guys. That's basically everything on SmackDown Live. It was a good show. To me, I thought it was really good. Thank you all so much for joining me. Hit that thumbs up if you guys did enjoy. Comment your opinions down below as well. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so. And follow me on my social media as well. Thank you all so much for joining and I'll see you all in my next video.